And we're back with hour number three of the Nutramedical Report. And by the way, it's Clay and Iron Show. You'll be starting to see lots of news show up on Clay and Iron. If you haven't looked on the front page of Nutramedical, you'll see the radiation detection site. Vista, California is there. We have a site operational now in Portland, Ashland, Oregon with uh, Jeff Rentz. We have Pacifica, California with David Crane, myself, our site's up at our class. We have also a site going to go up in Colorado and one we're looking at also in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, you need to know that we're going to have actual live data being pushed forward every 10 minutes with a graph. Uh, the situation worldwide, we have Tim Alexander with some major developments. I want to pose for the very start though. Yesterday I had Keith Davies on from Shubat.com and their site and they tried to propose that there was a backroom deal between Turkey and Iran that would try to back uh, Iran away from uh, support of Syria, which I think is total garbage. And secondly, the Russians aren't going to back away, even if Iran did. With the only port that Russia has in the Middle East, I see the re-emergence of the Soviet Union and Russia's power by the masterful uh, Mr. Lavrov's and the king of masters in terms of geopolitical arrangements, which doesn't drink vodka, Mr. Vladimir Putin, the superstar, if you want to call it, of international politics is being painted by our stupid media as a czar and a, a terrorist, in actual fact, has been the king of common sense and restraint, considering that the Slavians people continue to be shelled, schools and people, hundreds have died, including many children. Yeah, I think uh, it's only uh, Dr. Bill, the, uh, it's still up in the air whether uh, the so-called ceasefire, and I mean so-called, uh, will be extended after tomorrow. They almost no canceled the, the, the junta, Put almost canceled it because their helicopter got shot down. But, look, but what uh, the mainstream no media didn't tell people about that shooting down of that, that uh, transport helicopter is it was landing and taking off from a helltop location where the Junta's artillery was emplaced and firing down on the city. Uh, a lot of people are gone, but it was uh, a couple hundred thousand population. They just destroyed the city. And it probably was resupplying uh, that artillery base with uh, artillery shells. Right. So uh, the fact uh, and, is and that flying uh, some people off, maybe that were wounded or whatever. But uh, so when they shot it down, nine were killed. Now, uh, first off, it, all day long and night they were engaged in shelling that city. So that's one so, hell of yes. a ceasefire. Uh, yeah. And well, Russia, I, I would certainly of- think that the self defense forces were within their right to shoot down anything uh, in the vicinity of uh, that are that artillery base. You made an interesting comment just before the show about the comment of our foreign minister, and it was obscene. I call it Yiddish Eastern terrorist thuggish behavior. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the comment, I want you to, and this is your terms, by the way, these are your terms. Yeah. Tell us what the comment uh, well, was. Well, the, the Secretary of State, uh, Kerry, uh, who, when he ran for, what was it, president or vice president, was shocked to find out that he was really Jewish. Of course, his brother was a practicing oh Orthodox gosh. Jew. But anyway, uh, uh, if you believe that, you know, I'm sure he's got a bridge in Brooklyn he can uh, sell you right, real cheap. There you but, go. Uh, uh, he has given uh, Russia, uh, he has demanded that Russia, uh, within hours, begin the process of disarming uh, the self-defense forces. That's the only people that are stopping the fascists from rolling in uh, to the areas where a lot of Russian-speaking people are. And, uh, you know, I, I, that, I, I, the way I describe that is more Yiddish ghetto criminal behavior coming from the West. Damn right. shameful. And I, it really is. Uh, that's not uh, taken in the context of what's going on. That is shocking and shameful for an American Secretary of State. And it, it, it simply reflects the fact that uh, the American people no longer even remotely have control of their government. It's being run by uh, the global banking cartel families and uh, Netanyahu and, and the extreme Zionists. And uh, the, the behavior of this country is very shameful. I uh, was I had lunch with a, a friend of mine yesterday, and, and uh, he said he is so absolutely ashamed of the American government's behavior. He's, he's thinking about leaving the country because it's just, uh, 
it's just over the top. I mean, we're supporting uh, literally people that walk around and give the Nazi salute. We're supporting uh, extreme Zionists that, uh, you know, if, if you're not uh, born of a, of a uh, Jewish mother, you're, you're not a human being. All that kind of crazy stuff. We uh, overthrew the elected government, far from perfect elected government, but still the elected government in Ukraine, and put in uh, the oligarchs. Uh, the president now is a Jewish oligarch, as are a couple of the governors. Uh, when I say oligarchs, I mean they stole everything, including that which was nailed down. Their behavior is totally criminal. And of course, uh, and the president is also a deep linked to the Rothschild central banking empire, as is his prime minister. Um, and, of course, they're both dual citizens uh, in Israel. It's, it, it, that kind of behavior to support that is just, it's criminal. We are literally on the verge of, uh, of the Third World War and have been for about a month and a half now because of this foolishness. The American people don't support it. Uh, we're at war in who knows how many different countries we're killing people or our drones are killing people. Uh, the country has gone to hell. We've got about uh, 100 million people out of work. And uh, yet we continue to spend uh, billions and trillions on wars that we have no business being in. And in fact, every business being not in, uh, it's shameful. It, it, it's, yeah. it's immoral to the, to the max. Right, and the uh, fact is we're stupid enough. The problem is, is like Einstein's statement I've been mentioning over and over again the last few yes. weeks. Evil people will not destroy the world, but people who see the evil being done and do nothing, that will destroy the world. So it's our listeners, it's our people out there, it's the people that are being tweaked to push our congressmen and senators and anybody, local politicians, the average person in the street that just needs to get enraged over this. And if the average person gets enraged, it's over. Yeah, because we are many, and they are not even tiny. I mean, when you consider that uh, uh, if you're talking about the global banking cartel at the apex, there's the Rothschilds and eight families a little bit further down uh, in terms of global control. There's 30 families uh, between their senior operatives, their minions, and themselves, 8,000, maybe 10,000 people at the most. And there's, what, 7 billion plus people on this planet, and we're allowing the worst demonic evil evil trash to control us. For instance, here's a good example, uh, a poll just out. 74% of the people in Germany are opposed to expanding uh, NATO and uh, putting permanent bases in Poland and the Baltic states as a so-called buffer against Russia. 74% makes no difference. It uh, wouldn't make a difference if it was 100% because the German people don't control Germany. The people in France don't control France, the people in the United Kingdom don't control the United Kingdom, and the people in America sure as hell don't control America anymore. Right. Uh, and in fact, uh, I've heard a number of people say, and I and I think I'm right there with them. I'm not probably not going to bother to vote unless I can be convinced that my vote will count, because with computerized voting, it's a scam. Uh, there's there's no trail. Uh, he who controls the source code controls the outcome of the election, and we don't even have a, a real choice anyway. You know, I saw on the internet a bumper sticker, and I about gagged when I saw it. At the top was Hillary Clinton, and the running mate was Michelle Obama. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, no. oh please shoot me, somebody, you know. <clears throat> I mean, give me a break. You know, and so this is where we're at. It's, it's, it, we don't even have a choice between Tidley D and Twiddly Dumb. We have a choice between this witch and that witch. And we have a president that we don't even know his real name. We don't know where he was born, who his mother was, who his father was, what citizenship he holds. Uh, it's one thing after another. We are in an upside down world because we have allowed the criminal trash to take over. And we better wake up and reclaim it or we're all going to die in World War III. Yeah, it's coming real quick. We're talking about uh, the extreme statements are being made out of the box right now. Welcome back, and we have tons of news to go through, uh, Tim. As I say, miles uh, yeah, and miles. Let's take remember a that saying, miles and miles I, I before I sleep? I want to cover what's happening uh, 
not just in the Ukraine, because we've done that, but also in uh, uh, Iraq. But uh, we need to cover this Ebola thing, because uh, the World Health Organization has just come out and said a drastic action is, uh, you know, urgently needed to stop the Ebola outbreak. Now, you and I both know that Ebola came from an advanced biowar lab. Right. And, and, and I, I, I keep telling people, you've got to step way back from the forest and look at the pattern uh, from the trees and, and even the forest and look at the pattern in the forest. Uh, and that's kind of what an analyst does. You look for patterns. Right. Well, you have a number of new viruses that have sprung up in the last couple decades. And, gee, what a quinky dinky what a coincidence, uh, because it just happens to come at the time when the, uh, the first period in human history, at least that we know of, that mankind is able to do genetic engineering, to take snippets of DNA from one, viral, one virus and add to another and another and create a brand new virus. And Ebola clearly has uh, Ebola hemorrhagic fever, as is uh, Marburg hemorrhagic fever, were man-engineered viruses. There are a number of others, like uh, MERS. Uh, right. In fact, uh, there's a uh, pig virus that's... Uh, PRV, expected. it's called. A pig virus. And by the way, uh, when they start doing recombinant research to create multi-organ transplants, it's at Dr. Seed, who's a physicist in Chicago, where they grow pigs that are... 90% uh, genetically identical to the host because they grow the pig directly, directly as a, as a, in a sense, a, a, a what's called a, uh, a recombinant so that they actually contain mixed cells in the embryo from human to pig. So when they grow it, it's actually part pig, part human. And then they can do multi-organ transplants because he mixed Which is an offense histo- against God, but go ahead. Which, I'm sorry. Uh, mixed histocompatibility locus antigens, which are the MHC, are identical, so your body doesn't reject it. And I've got a report here from Recombinomics. It's 11 weeks sustained MERS transmission from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia to Tehran. And they have the report from the Tehran University of Medical Sciences uh, re- releasing the partial gene and gene sequences. Uh, this plague is spreading. In fact, it's more serious, I think, than Ebola. Ebola is so deadly. Although the World Health Organization is raising the flag on Ebola, it's just basically local. It's killing people like crazy in, in Africa. And they but have horrible they hygiene. <clears throat> Well, you know, they can, they can it tweak it, but here's the problem. It's, it it's, it's so lethal, though, that it doesn't get a chance to spread. You see, the viruses that kill the most people are not the most lethal. They have the longest incubation periods and the most viral shedding so they can infect other people. I know. But and then the, they pop they up and all of a sudden... Ebola and they can, <clears throat> I'm sure, oh, they somewhere can in multiple advanced biowar labs, there are examples of Ebola that have already been tweaked that will do exactly that. Right, just exactly. Here's on the what, shelf what I, in a, a cyogenic uh, freezer, just waiting to be pulled out. Right now, here's what I think will will happen. You're going to see uh, one or more of these viruses pop out. We looked at the uh, exponential uh, re, rep, 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 recombinant curve <clears throat> for the SARS uh, MERS virus, the beta coronavirus two, called a MERS or Middle Eastern Respiratory virus. And according to Ann Morrison and others, looking at the Rate of growth <clears throat> by the fall or early next winter. Anne is winter. very smart lady. Go ahead. Well, by the fall or early next winter, we're going to probably be seeing at least hundreds of thousands of cases, and very shortly millions of cases by next uh, spring or summer that will be popping up in America. Uh, this is what's called the exponential expansion of it, uh, which means by next uh, spring we're probably going to have some big, pretty big problems. That's just MERS. Then we have, of course, the H7N9, which hasn't leaped from China yet, but it's spread all over Asia. H7N9 is the most rapidly uh, multiplying virus in a uh, flu virus in human history. We have H5N1 that's been percolating for a decade now, uh, since 1997 when it popped up first, and it started to really show up in 2004 or 5. So by 2006, they passed international laws through the World Health Organization and the United Nations that every nation is assigned to hand over their health care and their military in the case of a pandemic uh, airborne virus, which could be either the uh, avian flu, the swine flu, MERS, coronavirus, uh, Ebola, or any other airborne, you know, multinational plague. So those those things are in place for the WHO and the United Nations to take over even the military and the healthcare system. And this is not a joke. This is already, treaties have been passed already in 2006, signed by virtually every nation on earth. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, they, 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 on one hand, 
these nations, particularly the smaller ones that aren't big players, they say, oh my God, we've got to sign this. On the other hand, if they do, they're signing their rights away and to the people that uh, basically created the virus in the first place. Let me tell you what I said about the, the World Health Organization statement uh, today about drastic action needed. I said Ebola came from, an, and this is on my site, uh, Europe, Ebola came from an advanced bio war lab. It was genetically engineered. From time to time, it is released in rural areas as a test and to keep it in front of the public for later use. Now it is in pre-pandemic mode. It is being ready for use in a global epidemic uh, to be tied into a global economic collapse and or to World War III with a cover that it is a natural event. Remember, when, if, advanced bio war hits, the total self-quarantine inside your home is the only way to ensure that you will survive. That means you need to have the food, water, and full supplies to survive for months without leaving the house or letting anyone or anything in, and never allow the government to force an RFID chip or any other mark of the beast on you to, quote, ensure that you're disease-free, end quote, or that... Uh, quote, you have been vaccinated, end quote, and don't take their vac- their fake vaccines. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, we're going to bring Mayor Ines on to talk about your rights for vaccines because the states are trying to literally make statements that, quote, dissolve your rights by trying to do a, I call flim flammerization. The medical yeah, system, well, by the way, Yeah, well, you know what? Some... Um, uh, my fat body belongs to me, not to the state. And no jerk in Washington or any place else is going to tell me I have to take a vaccine if I don't want to take it. And well, I, we they see better, that with the they better lock and load because I'll be locked and load. You're not shoving something in me that I when I say no. Well, I hear this with with I call the toxic docs. They try to shove in toxic vaccines, toxic uh, tests that don't need to be done, uh, toxic unnecessary surgical procedures. I mean, it really is pretty dangerous. I mean, I just recently read the report about one of our top baseball stars here at the Padres here in San Diego, and he died of a salivary gland tumor at 54. Well, you know damn well that the toxic docs got their paws on him. You know darn well they gave him radiation therapy, which destroyed his brain, oh, his sure. vasculature. Uh, they gave him uh, toxic chemotherapy, uh, which was I, I paid by numbers. I learned a case, uh, Dr. Bill, where a person had uh, a, an advanced case of skin uh, melanoma, uh, a, one area that had basically eaten through to the bone, and they used organic hemp oil on it, and within a few weeks, not only was that site cured, but the, the person had no cancer. Yeah, well, you know, that's not un- un- uh, unusual at all to see that kind of situation. We yeah, know but, that it, but, but Big Pharma gen- can't do that. Well, no, here's the situation. The gene switch uh, issue, the gene switch issue is really important. That's what the Brzezinski Clinic is doing. I contacted Dr. Greg uh, this morning to get him back on. Uh, they're, the FDA doing research with them because a number of other clinics are trying to get in on the business, but they want to kind of edge in and take over all the research after all the persecution of Dr. Stanislaw Brzezinski. Cancer is a gene switch problem, not an immune problem. And this paint by number chemo is nuts.